This past month, we would see Jack Hughes absolutely undress the Hawks and Lincoln in in overtime, while Patrick Kane be like an Xbox controller that just ran out of batteries. And after winning the game, Jack Hughes would skate up to the fans and just toss his stick into the crowd. King shit. And it made me think, if this was any other scenario besides scoring an OT winner, there would surely be a rule for throwing your stick into the crowd, R right? Absolutely. And is the idea of throwing a stick into a crowd of people that led to the invention of a new rule insane? Absolutely, because back in 2004, during a matchup with the Toronto Maple Leafs and the Nashville Predators, the score was 0-0 halfway through the second. And after Matt Sandin would snap his stick on a one-timer attempt, he would just straight up throw a sharp stick into a crowd of people. Which is honestly just insane. Because a snap stick is basically a spear, you know, it's sharp serrated fiberglass that could easily impale someone depending on the break. And after this act of frustration, everyone was just in shock. And the refs, the officials, well, they gathered and tried to think of a penalty to assess the Sundin, but there was none, so they couldn't. However, right after that game, Sundin would be handed a one game suspension being the first player in history to do something this ruthless, also changing the existing throwing stick rule to incorporate such a savage act. Except, this is not a common play that, that just happens on any night, as Jack Hughes OT winner was the first time in 17 years since the initial incident. So with that, in today's video, we're gonna go over NHL players who single-handedly force rule changes in the NHL. And this has hands down been one of my favorite video series on this channel, because the great thing is, there's been so many fascinating reasons or incidents that have led to rules existing. And also, my last rule change video got wrongfully flagged and basically shadow banned. So if you haven't seen it, go watch it. It was a great one. And also, there is five parts to the series now. So if I didn't cover a rule, I probably did. So go check out the other videos. I'll link down a playlist down below. Go check it out. But with that, what is your favorite rule change that it was a result of a player doing something? Comment down below. Or perhaps just a rule change that needs to happen. Let me know. And make sure to press subscribe for your weekly dose of hockey content. The evolution of player equipment, specifically helmet wearing, in the NHL, has honestly been a shockingly wild ride. Whether it was back in the 1900s where goalies, yes goalies, didn't wear masks at all. And it wasn't until 1959 where Jacques Pont received a shot to a face which resulted in a broken nose, did a goalie wear a mask for the first time in league history. Wild. Not to mention his coach initially told him he wasn't allowed, and it took him saying he would refuse to play unless they allowed him to wear it. Also, winning the game helped his case with keeping it on. On top of the fact that Plant was scolded by the entire NHL for wearing a mask? Like imagine that! People thinking you were pathetic for not wanting a shattered face. And even though Plant started the revolution of goaltenders wearing masks, it wasn't until decades later, when Bill Masterton sadly passed away due to a brain injury, did players even consider wearing a helmet. And not until 1979 did the NHL actually make it a rule. And if you didn't wear one before the rule change, you still didn't have to. Basically a twisted grandfather clause, as players thought it was wimpy to wear a helmet. And not until 2019 did we see the next major rule change involving helmets. Because during a game versus the St. Louis Blues, Tori Krug was getting feisty. And during a net front battle with David Perron, Perron would basically put him in a headlock and rip his helmet off. I think this constitutes for interference, maybe. As he would also basically sit on his shoulders, which now makes it hilarious. But this would upset Krug so much, without a helmet, my man would bolt right back into play. We are talking, this is the fastest Krug has ever skated in his life. And he would land a monster hit without a helmet, giving us these beautiful shots with his hair flowing as he delivered that massive hit. And Krug would even finish his shift without a helmet. However, as soon as this game ended, the league was like, yeah, this can't happen again, as the Tory Krug incident would create a brand new rule, stating if a player loses their helmet, they either have to instantly put it back on or go to the bench, and if they don't, their team will receive a minor penalty. Okay, so now that we've gone over how insane it was that players, let alone goalies, did not wear helmets, what if I were to tell you that goalies could not drink water? Well, technically they could, 
but just not for entire periods at a time. Because back in the day, there was no TV breaks or scheduled breaks in general, so unless a goalie sprinted to their bench for a quick drink, goalies could rarely get water during the actual game. And as you can imagine, this started to become a massive issue. Specifically, with Pelle Lindbergh, who is very susceptible to dehydration. And again, as you can imagine for a goalie who is playing 60 minutes a night and heavy equipment, this could be very dangerous. And there was many situations with Pelly where he would just have to straight up just change out with the back of goalie as he couldn't play any longer without getting sick. And well, during a game back in 1985, Pelly had enough and started putting his bottle on the top of his net. Who would have thought? And this pissed off teams around the NHL so much, Glenn Sather, who's the head coach of Gretzky in the Oilers dynasty, would go on record for saying, and, and get this, what are they going to want up there next? A bucket of chicken. What a... I'm going to repeat that. He's comparing water to a bucket of chicken on top of his net. People back then had the audacity to get upset at a professional athlete for needing water. Like, like what? As they thought water, H2O, might spill on the ice. That was the reasoning. That water might spill out on a frozen water. However, because Pele used a Velcro strap, the ref allowed it, which led to the creation of the dumbest NHL rule. Yes, goalie, you can have water. Later that year, goalies in the NCAA would start doing it, and then every goalie in, in the world realized it was complete stupidity to not have their own water bottle, and to think that Pele had to be brave for drinking water. How would the boomers feel today with the rules we are seeing if they think that, you know, drinking water was for babies? Something that has always been a lingering issue in the NHL is major penalties. That is, with the increasing emphasis on player safety, which has led to the creation of more rules to protect players, something that was becoming a massive issue is how refs could determine if something was actually a major penalty. Because in the past, we've seen calls that have led to players being kicked out of games, even though they did absolutely nothing. And well, one game in 2019 showed this massive flaw in the inability for refs to review plays. Because in a Game 7 matchup, Vegas would go up 3-0 in a dominating fashion. And with 10 minutes remaining in the game, the Sharks were toast. Except, off a face-off, Cody Eakin would shove Joe Pavelski. And after colliding with another Vegas player in just a freak accident, Pavelski would crash to the ground and have to be carried out by his teammates. And because of just how intense this scene was, the refs not even really knowing what just transpired, would hand out a 5 minute major. But here's the thing, on a normal power play, you score and the game goes back to even strength. But on a 5 minute major, you can score 10 times within those 5 minutes. And I kid you not, on a play that should have been, you know, a minor penalty at best, would turn into a major, and the Sharks would score four goals in the remaining 10 minutes and win the game in overtime. In a situation where Vegas was about to go to the next round, they would be sent packing home solely because of a missed call. Right after this incident, the NHL would implement a ruling, aka the Cody Eakin rule, where refs can review all major penalties before actually assessing them to hopefully avoid situations like this Game 7 catastrophe. In today's game, Goalies playing the puck has drastically declined from the old days. As goalies like Martin Brodeur would revolutionize the game in their own rights because of their immense passing abilities. Because if a goalie was a good enough passer, they are basically like a sixth player. And yes, goalies like Mike Smith still exist in today's game, but they don't even come close to the impact a goalie like Gary Suke Smith made back in the 70s. As Gary Smith would become notorious, not just for playing the puck, but straight up carrying the puck past his own blue line, and sometimes nearly into the attacking zone. Like, could you imagine if a goalie today skated the puck into the opposing zone? That would just be absurd. And because of this, the NHL would have to invent a brand new rule to prevent Gary Suke Smith's shenanigans, which also is hilariously named illegal participation. No, you are not allowed to participate in this game. Bad, Gary Smith. Bad. But anyways, before we end off this video, I just wanted to thank all of you for the immense support. My most recent video has just got shadow banned, and as I mentioned before, so did my last rules video. 
and it's been very frustrating but your support and just positivity on my videos has really helped me. Sometimes it feels like I'm really just torturing myself making these videos as I'm also a full-time student and I have a full-time career. But I do mean this, your support, guys and girls, make this whole situation a whole lot easier. So if you enjoy the videos, make sure to press subscribe for your weekly dose of hockey content. And as always, thanks for watching.